Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my session. It's going to be about Uyuni. It's not actually the first talk today about Uyuni. And there was a question made in the, in the previous uh, session. It, it was in the early morning, in case you missed it. Uh, and I'm going to repeat it, actually. Uh, who of you knows what Uyuni is? OK, not bad. I would say a little less than half of the audience. And it's actually good, because it, this is a very, uh, a, a very basic introduction to what Uyuni is. Um, so the title I, I chose uh, is the Open Source Configuration and Infra Infrastructure Management Solution for Software Defined Infrastructure. So a bit complicated, uh, and a bit long, so let's try to make it uh, easier to, to digest. So first of all, about me, uh, my name is uh, Raul Osuna. I am uh, one of the UUNI uh, and SUSE manager, uh, software release engineers. Uh, the other one is uh, my colleague Marina that is uh, there. Uh, she was presenting this morning the, the other session for, for this product. Um, and I am a release engineer for, for this product for since not so long. Uh, and actually, uh, before this, I was a technical support engineer that was very close to sysadmins. Sys and actually, Uyuni is a tool that uh, sysadmins uh, might be using a lot. And yes, I was for 10 years in support, so I was really uh, in contact with, with a lot of them. So the agenda for today, uh, we'll try to make it brief, is about what is Uyuni, how, how does it work, why Uyuni, where, where can Uyuni be used, uh, you might be wondering, uh, after you see some slides, you might be wondering whether this is complicated or not, and some links that I will share at the end. So, Uyuni, where does it come from? So maybe you have already seen this slide, but uh, in case you didn't, uh, well, actually, Uyuni is a place. Uh, it's a place in Bolivia, and it's the biggest salt desert in, in the world. And you will see why the, the salt the thing later on. So the first thing is, what is Uyuni? Well, uh, as the title of the presentation said, it's a, mainly a configuration and infrastructure management tool. And some of the functions, uh, there are many, but the one that uh, customers uh, and community uh, users uh, use first uh, is the automatic management of patches and, and software. So if you want to install your software and you have a central tool that downloads the, the patches, the, the, the software, and, and you don't need to download it uh, many times, and it distributes the same packages to, to all the clients. So it simplifies the management. Uh, uh, apart from the making the installation easier, uh, it supports several different operating systems, uh, Linux operating systems. Uh, it's not only about the flavor of the operating systems, that they can be different systems, but it, it is also uh, about what kind of systems, whether they are physical, bare metal, uh, virtual machines, now that uh, containers are uh, getting uh, in, into the trend, and we hear about them, all the time, uh, it supports containers as well, and Kubernetes, Internet of Things, Edge, public cloud, uh, uh, a, data, a private data center, whatever. Uh, but it does not only uh, care about uh, and take care of the software management, it also does configuration management. So all your configuration files that you have in ETC that you want to be deployed uh, from a server, you can handle that with Uyuni. Um, it does automatic provisioning. So we had a talk about the successor for AutoJazz a little while ago. So uh, Uyuni uh, works with uh, AutoJazz, and you can do your provisioning, auto installations uh, with uh, Uyuni as the central tool. Uh, it also takes care about the compliance. Uh, 
you can also look for CVEs uh, that uh, you are worried about and see whether your systems are affected by, by those CVEs. Um, now that confidential computing is uh, something new, uh, this is uh, also being integrated into, into Uyuni. And it saves time and effort for big space uh, management. So there are uh, users uh, for, the, for this community product, but also for the enterprise uh, product that is SUSE Manager. Uh, we know of customers that use it for up to thousands uh, of, of, mach of machines. I think I heard even up to 10,000 uh, machines. Um, and always with the philosophy from SUSE that upstream first. So everything that is developed goes into Uni first and then is uh, backported into SUSE Manager. And how does Uni work? Well, I already told you something about salt. It's, it's not only a very important ingredient, but it's also what uh, fits uh, Uyuni. So Uyuni uses SALT, that is a configuration management system, and it uses that to manage the clients. So the Uyuni server is actually a, a SALT uh, master. It's in the terminology of SALT. The server is called the SALT master, and the clients that are connected to Uyuni uh, are called, uh, in the term terminology of SALT, uh, SALT minions. And why Uyuni? Well, uh, there is a long explanation in, in the presentation from my uh, colleague Marina this morning, and uh, you might want to watch the recording, but, and there is a little bit more of history there, but a uh, short story long for not repeating the same. Uh, we were being uh, based on the project Spacewalk, and uh, it wasn't being uh, maintained uh, with that um, big, uh, I don't want to say effort, with that big amount of work as, as before, and actually, after some time, it even got discontinued. Um, and well, uh, there was a moment of time in which a fork was seen as, as needed. And, and well, actually, it uh, seems to be the, the right decision. So I said um, that it can be installed, it can, be, it can manage uh, in many different systems. So what can Uyuni manage? Where can I use it? So there you have a, a extensive list of uh, operating systems that can be used with Uyuni. Uh, and of course, you can manage uh, everything that comes from SUSE, like uh, most of OpenSUSE distributions, like uh, Lib15, uh, Lib Micro, but also the enterprise one. So, enterprise, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12, 15, but not only the server, uh, all the flavors like desktop, SIP, or enterprise micro, but the good thing for a lot of users of the community is that it is not only SUSE, so you can manage Red Hat and all the clones, like Alibaba, Alma Linux, Oracle Linux, Red Hat, uh, Rocky, Amazon, OpenOila, uh, but moreover, it can also use Debian and Ubuntu. Uh, as of today, versions 11 and 12, Ubuntu 20.04, 2204, uh, it is in the works to support 2404, uh, and even Raspberry Pi OS 12, which uh, brings me to the point of the architectures. So maybe you're thinking x86, 64, there are more stuff. Uh, so yes, uh, you can manage uh, clients that are not the usual x86, 64. So for SUSE products, uh, you can manage uh, Power, uh, S390, uh, ARM, um, and for the rest of the systems, uh, it depends on which one, and some architectures are uh, available in, in other operating systems as well. And okay, you might be thinking a lot of information, a lot of things that Uyuni is doing, uh, and more that I didn't talk about. It, it sounds difficult, right? Well, it has a web UI. 
so it's not only CLI, of course. Uh, of course, there is a Linux system where Uyuni is running, and you can run commands, and you can do th things in the command line, but the cool stuff is that there is a web UI, and you can do a lot of the stuff, uh, you can do it simply in the web UI. So, for example, here, this page is the, the page where uh, it is showing the systems that are registered into Uni, and you can see, checking in the base channels, uh, I can see that uh, there is one that is based in SLS 15 as before, uh, another one that uh, seems to be some KVM host, uh, there are some, a couple of servers that are open to Selip, but there is one that sounds like Ubuntu in the name, so there is an Ubuntu system, uh, there is Lib, um, and something that I wrote down in the notes is that you might be seeing that the base channel, uh, for some of them, it has a, a different string. It seems to be like um, uh, self-generated, so actually you can use your own channels and even better, you can use the channels from the provider and you can clone them, you can make a photograph of them because the channels get updates and some uh, users from the community want to freeze their channels so that they don't get uh, any more updates and they are always in the same state. You can freeze it according to different criteria, but for example, one of the most typical would be to use uh, some date, and you see this channel that my clients are going to see has the updates of last month and, is, and will have nothing else. For this will be my, I don't know, production environment that is uh, fairly tested, something like this. And you can stage uh, um, environments and you can simply change the channels of a system and this way your system would be promoted from um, development to um, production or, or, or whatever, and actually there is one of the features that uh, has Uyuni that is called the content lifecycle management that enables us to do that everything in the web UI. I don't have a, a screenshot for that, but it's another example of things that Uyuni can do. So here another screenshot. Uh, this is the screen where it's showing the patches that are relevant to your system. And now it is showing in all the systems that you have in your uni environment, there are only two patches there. And you can click on them, you can choose to, to install them, and, and well, uh, it is funny to, to see the, the screen so so empty because when I, I was at support, I would find this uh, in, in the customers uh, full of uh, systems that were not patched, but okay. And uh, another screenshot here is from the CBE audit. Uh, I already mentioned this briefly before, and uh, it allows you to look up for one CBE over there. Uh, well, uh, it is not fully uh, completed, but you will enter the year of the CV and the number, and you will look it up. And if you check the possible values of the system, it, it will tell you that uh, some of your systems are affected, uh, but you don't have patches available, then maybe you have to worry. Some systems are affected, but there is a patch available in one of the, in one of the channels, so it, is, it would be as simple as uh, clicking on that and installing the patch. Uh, or maybe the patch can be found in a product migration target, because Uyuni enables to migrate your, your system from one version to another, depending on the systems and depending on, on the kind of a grade. So maybe it tells you, if you are grade your system, you're going to get your, your patch. Um, it can also be that one of your system is not, af is not affected by that uh, vulnerability, so it will tell you, or that it is uh, patch. Okay, so it looks cool. Maybe I combine uh, somebody to, from the community to, to use uh, this product. Where can I start? So the first point would be the uniproject.org uh, website. This is the website of the project. And of course, um, all the links that you will see in the same uh, page 
so such as uh, the contacts, the documentation, of course, uh, the source code, uh, GitHub. And there are uh, the GitHub is quite uh, active. Actually, there are uh, GitHub discussions uh, there. Um, the issues from the community uh, contributing. Uh, you might be thinking, I'm not a developer. Uh, can I help you? Uni? Yes, uh, help. There is always something that can be done. Uh, documentation can be done. Uh, for example, as I said, I was in support for very long, and I am not a developer. And during one of the hack weeks, I added the support for um, OpenOILA. Uh, it's like a clone from Red Hat as well, so it was very similar, but it wasn't very difficult, only changing a few configuration files, and you send your pull request, and eventually it gets accepted. And the same for uh, Raspberry Pi OS, Raspbian. Um, as I said, if even myself, that I'm not a developer, could do that, uh, many people from the, from the community can, can help that. And last but not least, uh, uh, there are the Uyuni community hours that are the last Friday of the month at 4 p.m. Central European time, 2 p.m. Uh, UTC. And oh, surprise, tomorrow is last Friday of, uh, of the month. So there is going to be a Uyuni uh, community hours edition live from OpenSUSECON. It will be upstairs in one of the rooms upstairs. So. And I will do a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, we are going to have sessions from, from the Google Summer of Code students, for um, two of them, apart from the usual sessions that we have. So another developer will be talking as well. And, and we will uh, speak about the latest um, up, up, updates from the last UUNI versions. And as I said, uh, in case you want to check the recordings, uh, my colleague's uh, session, Marina's, um, was this morning. Uh, if you need to, to look up the, the title to, to watch it. Um, and then, as I said, the Uni Community Hours, and you have the details there. So uh, join us. And uh, in the future, you can join remotely for, for those Uni Community Hours as well. And OK. I hope I didn't make it too long, too boring, and I hope that you have um, some new project uh, to check. So if you have any questions, anything you would like to ask about, OK, uh, if you think of something later, I'm going to be here at the conference, my colleague Marina as well, and some uh, colleagues from the uh, uh, Uyuni developers as well are here. So feel free to, to reach us, ask anything. And thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you.